In this code vein build guide, we'll explore just exactly how you make the Adrenaline Rush build, which is a halberd DPS build that focuses on insanely fast combos. How do you get the most from your weapons, blood veil, your blood code, and your gifts? Well, that's exactly what we're going to cover and how they all fit together to create the Adrenaline Rush build. The Adrenaline Rush build has very good burst damage by using one of the best, if not the best, skill gift in Chariot Rush. It does 10% more damage than Circulating Pulse, and executes in a fraction of the time, allowing you to sneak it in without taking damage. This is a Halberd exclusive gift, so you cannot use it with any other weapon type. Additionally, you can combo Shadow Assault onto the end for an extra 10,000 damage at level 100, or just use it when needed. There are several Halberd type blood codes in Code Vein, and you won't begin the game with them all. In this section, I'll discuss which blood codes to use while you're working your way to your final destination, Scout. First up is the most obvious one, Fighter. Fighters have decent strength and dexterity scaling, giving you the means to use any early game Halberd effectively. It has a terrible stat spread for all the buffs you need, but luckily you won't have them all so early on. Upgrade to Prometheus as soon as you can. Prometheus. Prometheus has B or higher in every single stat, with both dexterity and mind being B+. What more can you ask for? Use this one until you gain Queenslayer, as it's likely the best early game blood code. Queenslayer. Once you finish your own personal memory, you'll gain the Queenslayer blood code, which is perfect for this build. It features both good dexterity and mind scaling, and has enough of the other stats to use all the buffs we want. It also contains the best buff in the game in Final Journey, but even without this buff, it still outperforms any other blood code for a dexterity-based halberd except Scout. This means you'll be doing near maximum damage even when you're not using Final Journey, and that's just the icing on the cake. Scout. Scout is what we'll be using out on the landscape because it has quick mobility by default, and this will allow you to use Noble Silver and still be quick if you're using the Impaler. It also has high max i -Core, and this build is very i -Core hungry because of the skill gifts that are spammed. Just be sure to swap to Queenslayer during boss fights for extra damage. Blood Veils play a very important role in the effectiveness of gifts. Your Blood Code and Blood Veil work together to determine how strong your buffs are, with your weapon having no impact. When selecting a Blood Veil, be sure to look for ones that grant a higher overall light gift value, or one that provides decent protection. At Endgame, I have a few setups. First, I like to just generally explore using the Noble Silver Blood Veil. It's the second lightest in the game, and when combined with the Alleviating Impaler, you'll be in the quick mobility range. This will keep your damage roughly the same as the normal Impaler, because we use Swift Destruction, but it will give you those uber dodges. Second, I like White Vestment when fighting bosses and weight doesn't matter because of Final Journey, which makes you quick no matter how heavy you are. Swap these around depending on what you're currently doing or what boss you're facing. Sometimes having the extra burst from Noble Silver is worth it. For this build, I like to use two different weapons, the Impaler and the Argent Wolf Poleaxe. The Impaler is a spear and it has an exceptional moveset. It allows you to attack more quickly than many one-handed swords, which prevents you from getting caught in long twirly animations that can get you killed. Additionally, it's the lightest of the poleaxes, which helps you reach that quick mobility more easily. The Argent Wolf poleaxe hits the hardest of any dexterity scaling polearms I have tested, but it has an absolute shit moveset and it's quite heavy. However, if you're simply using it with Chariot Rush, you can take down things in one combo much more easily. Pull this bad boy out on hard-to-kill targets and burn them down quickly, then swap back to the Impaler. Note that if you find yourself using this weapon more, then you should use Queenslayer instead of Scout. Gifts play a vital part of any build, but even more so in a build that relies heavily upon them like this one. There are a number of excellent light gifts, many of which are defensive, however for this build we'll focus primarily on the offensive ones. We will also be using two skills I have not put in any other build. Gifts initially can only be used with the blood code that they are part of, but as you use them in combat you will master them, and then you can use them with any blood code. There are both passive and active gifts, and I'll cover which are good in both categories for an Adrenaline Rush build. You can only have 4 passive gifts equipped at one time, and 8 active. Let's begin with the recommended passives first. Swift Destruction. This passive increases your damage for being lightweight, which you will be because you're using an Alleviating Impaler and an Ivory Grace. It will also apply to Argent Wolf Poleaxe, just to a lesser extent, unless you use Final Journey. Halberd Mastery. This passive will buff your Halberd damage by more than you'd think, and is a must for this build. Mind will power up. This passive is a must because it allows you to meet the requirements for Bridge to Glory. It's one of the best buffs in the game, so you definitely want it. Increased Gift Speed. This passive will make both your Chariot Rush and your Shadow Assault complete much faster. This will allow you to get in, hit with these, and get out before you take damage. Active Gifts. Adrenaline. This will boost your damage per swing modestly for a modest amount of time. It's good early on, but not as great later. Overdrive. A great gift that boosts damage for you and your companion until you're struck. Don't get hit, and you gain extra damage. Blood Sacrifice. You'll need this to stack buffs because this is a very i hungry build. Use it when necessary to gain more i -Core. Gift Extension. It increases the duration of your buffs by 50%, and since we use a lot, it comes in handy. 
Bridge to Glory, one of the best buffs in the game, it will boost your damage significantly for a very long time. You won't get it until much later in the game. Final Journey, this is your boss killer gift. Activate before boss fights and take them down fast. The damage boost you gain is about 50% of your already buffed value. Chariot Rush, unique only to Halberds, this skill does incredible damage and it does it in a hurry. Use it often for devastating damage. Shadow Assault, good alone but particularly deadly when used at the end of Chariot Rush. It does about 10k damage with this build at level 100, which is nothing to sneeze at for 3 Icor and the speed with which it executes. Final Tips Out of all the builds I have made, this one may have the highest sustained DPS. Halberds have excellent stagger buildup when they strike, particularly the Impaler, and this allows you many more openings to attack enemies than you might usually get with one-handed weapons. Consider adding Tirelessness if you find you are running out of stamina on some bosses to help keep up the Onslaught. Chariot Rush is cheap at 4 Ikora and is only barely outperformed by Dragon Lunge, which can't be used with Halberds. It also hits more reliably because it has better tracking, which makes the Halberd not only faster than a two-handed sword per attack, but it means it has roughly the same burst potential if used properly. You can also dodge out of Chariot Rush if you don't think you can pull off the last strike without getting hit, making it very flexible. Increased gift speed is pretty much a must to use Chariot Rush with any regularity. It will reduce the time to execute this skill gift by more than you'd think, allowing you to get in and get out without taking damage. Unslot it at your own risk. Lastly, the Obliterator Axe works exceptionally well, but it uses Strength Scaling, which isn't ideal because Queen Slayer has more Dexterity Scaling than Strength. Still, if you'd rather use it than the Argent Wolf Poleaxe because it's shitty moveset, you can do so with only a small loss in damage. If you do decide to use it, use Ishtar as you make your way through levels for better damage, and then swap back to Queen Slayer when you reach bosses. Be sure to check out our other build guides and our Getting Started Guide and Scaling Guide if you have basic questions of the game, and stay tuned for our Best Blood Codes build guide.